Hi, this is the third video where we've been looking at the uh, foundation tier and it's the sample assessment materials. If you follow the link below in the description, you'll be able to download this and have a go at some of these questions for yourself. The whole idea with it is that we're going to um, work through each of the videos about 20, 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes in length. Uh, please do keep stopping and starting, have a go at the questions for yourself and then compare your solutions. Okay, in the previous video, we finished at question number 23, so we're going to now start from question number 24, which is talking about Gary driving from London to Sheffield. Okay, let's just have a look at that for a moment. So, the important thing with dealing with word problems is that you need to just take your time as you work through them, read the first sentence and kind of do something with it. So don't worry about the rest of it for the moment. Okay, so it's saying that Gary drove from London to Sheffield, it took him three hours at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Okay, so let's just have a look at Gary's journey. So Gary um, traveled at a speed, okay, and that equaled distance over time. Now, if you're not familiar with this, please do make sure that you are okay with these sorts of formulas because you will come across these questions on a fairly regular basis. Okay, so it took him an average speed of 80. And the distance we don't know, but we do know it took him three hours. All right. So if we then multiply across by three, what we're saying is, is that the total distance that, Travi, uh, that uh, Gary drove was 240 kilometers in total. OK, I hope that's all right for you. All right, so let's go from there then to look at Lynn's journey. So Lynn also had speed equals distance over time. Now you'll notice at this point, I haven't really worried too much about what Lynn is doing. I just kind of know that she exists, okay? But she says that she drove from London to Sheffield as well and it took her five hours. Okay, well if that is the case, then in that five hours, it means then that she drove exactly the same distance OK, so exactly the same distance means then that she would take um, speed and the same sort of distance, which is 240, divided by the time, which is going to be five hours. OK, so let's have a look. at. There we go. OK, so in this particular case, if she did 240 kilometers in distance, and this time it took her five hours. Well, we're being asked to work out the average speed, so I've used exactly the same formula. If I divide one by the other, I get 48. So in this particular case, Lynn drove at a speed of 48 kilometers per hour. So, with these types of questions, it's always a good idea to take it a little bit of a step at a time, get some information from the first bit of the word problem and then use that information to be able to answer the rest. So it's always bit by bit, okay? So let's have a look then at part B and it says, if Lynn did not drive along the same roads as Gary, Explain how this affects your answer. Well, she could be quicker or she could be slower. So that's really the only um, answer to that. She could be quicker. OK, so if the roads were uh, shorter or slightly faster roads, she could be quicker or she could be slower. All right. And that would be absolutely fine for this particular uh, paper to get that one mark. OK, so let's move on then to question number 25. And question number 25 is looking, um, at least on the surface, at dealing with ratios. OK, so we've got this situation where we've got the ratio of men to women in a company is three to two. So again, like we did before, let's just stop that for a moment and let's just write that in a format that kind of works for maths. So we've got men to women and we've got three men for every two women. Okay, so if the company employed five people, three, three of them would be men and two of them would be women. 
Okay, right. Well, what I've spotted in the question is that we're dealing with percentages. Okay, now a percentage means, so if I just write this up here, percentage means out, out of 100. That's really what percentage means. So actually, rather than this particular company employing five people, I'm going to change the rules. I'm going to say on this particular occasion, they actually employ a hundred people, okay? Because I've got a suspicion that this will be useful to me when I answer the rest of this particular question. So in other words, the company is 20 times bigger, okay? There were five, there's now a hundred. So therefore, there's 20 times more women, which means there's now 40 women, and there's 20 times more men, which means there's 60 men. So actually, in this particular bigger company that I've just created, I've got 60 men and I've got 40 women. Then it says 40% of the men are under the age of 25. Well, that's OK, because now I can say, well, I'm going to work out 40% of 60 OK, well, like we've done before, when we've been working with percentages, I'm going to say, well, I know 10 percent of 60 equals six and therefore 40 percent of 60 is going to be four times more. Well, if it's four times more, it's going to be equal to 24. OK, so if 40 percent of this number of men are under the age of 25, then 20, that means there's 24 of them are under the age of 25. Okay, then it says 10% of the women are under the age of 25. Well, that's easy enough. So I can say now 10% of 40 equals four. So in other words, in this particular case, then I've got 24 men are under the age of 25 and four women are under the 20, age of 25. And then it means that I can answer the final question which says what percentage of all the people in the company are under the age of 25? Well, the good thing is because I've made it 100 people, then I'm already out of 100, which is the meaning of the word percentage. OK, and what I've worked out is that 24 of them are men and four of them are women. So it must be 28 out of 100 people in that particular company are under the age of 25. So therefore, to answer the question, it's 28 percent. OK, I hope that's all right for you. Sometimes these types of questions, it just makes it much, much, much easier if you spot that they're talking about percentages. OK, now, if that is the case, remember that means out of 100. So therefore, it just makes it a little easier if you change the rules slightly and make it out of 100 people. OK, let's move on then to question number 26. I'm going to aim for this video to be about 20 to 30 minutes long, and that will give you then the ability to be able to keep stopping and starting and do a little bit of revision and work through this particular series of questions. So please do print this off from the link below and have a go. Um, this is probably a it's quite a tricky question, really, because I think you either can do it or you can't. Um, it's one of those situations where you need to be able to visualise a 3D. But what we're saying is, is that if you're sort of standing in front of this thing, this is what you see, OK? And then what we need to do is draw this as a sketch, OK? Now, unfortunately, my video won't allow me to do that. But hopefully, if you have printed this off, you'll be able to kind of follow what I'm doing here. What I'm saying is this is the front elevation. OK, now that front elevation is five centimetres along and it's going to be four centimetres high. OK, now if I want to, it makes it a little bit easier for me. I can say this is two and this is going to be two and this is going to be two along here. OK, so that's me in front of this front elevation. OK, then if I'm standing at the side, what I'm going to see is this bit here. Now, the only way I'm going to do that is I'm going to see this bottom piece and this. So that's going to be the bottom piece. So this piece here is going to be this, OK, which has a height of two, which we've said is a height of two and it's three centimetres along. OK, and then I'm also going to see this top piece, which is this piece along here. So as I'm looking at that, OK, there's my 
I'm looking at that, <laughs> okay? So what I can see is this flat bit and this flat bit, okay, which are these two flat bits here. And then it's really just a case of completing the sketch, okay? And I can draw it a bit like that, okay? And this plan at the top, which you can see from the bottom here is or from the top of the uh, uh, the screen is where I'm looking down on it. So where I'm looking down on it, I can see this flat piece here and this piece here. Okay, a um, bit tricky to see. I think sometimes with these sorts of things, um, it is better to kind of um, maybe model them up for yourself, maybe use a bit of cardboard or something like that and just check that it all works out for you. Okay, let's move on then to question number 27. So with question number 27, um, using this whole idea of something called stratified sampling. Now stratified sampling is quite common really, because the whole idea with it is that you sample a small number of people. In this particular case, it tells us 60 people out of a whole school of 1200 and the whole idea is is that whatever those 60 people decide is what's applied to the whole school so let's just check that she did actually ask 60 people if i add up these numbers here they do actually add up to 60 so that's good okay so we're absolutely right with that and then it says, well, they want us to work out how much ham pizza that Kate should order, okay? Well, the first thing is, is that what we're saying is, is that 20 out of 60 people, so 20 out of 60 people suggested that ham would be the type of pizza that they wanted. Now that's of the school of 1200, okay? So remember, this is the kind of sample that we're using, but actually it applies to the whole school. So this multiplication means of 1,200 people in the whole school, okay? Now, if you calculate that out, um, you're gonna do it maybe slightly differently to me. There are different ways of doing this, but what I'm gonna do, just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna multiply across, so that's gonna be 2,400. I'm gonna divide by 60, okay? Now, if I do that, then, Actually, it's not 2,400, it's 24,000, I beg your pardon. Okay, so what I can do with this is I can knock off my zeros, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide through by 6. Okay, so I can do this as short division. 6 into 2400. Zero, zero. Now, if that is the case, I can say how many 6s are there in 2? Well, there's none. How many 6s are there in 24? Well, there's actually 4. And then 6s in nothing and nothing, and 6s in nothing and nothing. So actually, she's going to need to order 400 pizzas. Okay, so hopefully you can see that she's going to need to order 400 ham pizzas. Okay. Great. So um, with that, it's also asked us to write down any assumptions that we make. OK, well, the assumption that she she should order 400 ham pizzas, however, it assumes that all 1200 students want a pizza. OK, so they might not want pizza, they might want pasta or they might want something else. OK, so it's all students want a pizza. And also it could be that um, all students um, want a whole pizza. OK, so they might not eat a whole pizza, they might prefer... Um, half a pizza or two pizzas. <laughs> okay, I hope that's okay for you. Um, I'm going to stop the video there. That's the end then of question 27 and then we'll start again with the final little bit of this particular playlist in the next video. I hope it's been useful to you. Please do try all of the questions. If you're not sure, add a comment below. I'll always come back to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.